On screen are three men. From left to right are Noam Chomsky, Jordan B. Peterson, and Sam Harris. All three are popular living philosophers of one stripe or another. All three have given speeches and sold books extolling their views. All three have said truthful, meaningful, and profound things about the nature of reality and people in it. All three are also fallible human beings. Something these men also have in common are dedicated subreddits and what I can only describe as fan bases who take their respective object of affection and treat their words like gospel. You need merely ask these people why they subscribe to such men and their ideas, and the answer is invariably some form of recognition, a connection with the material in question, and by extension the person who so generously deigned to share it with them. Something's been explained to them in a way that connects with them intellectually. The temptation is too strong not to share the same insights with other people. As it happens, however, not everyone is receptive to the same kind of information, and not all of the information is true, or in fact honest. I don't mean to slime any of these men or their work, I only mean to draw attention to the fact that they are men, mere men, no less fallible than you or I. Yet such notions appear to never cross the mind of a certain subsection of each of their followers, who openly repel and otherize anyone who dares impugn the word of their chosen philosopher king. Spitting in the face of the rationality they purport to advocate, they close their minds to competing ideas and defer the intellectual heavy lifting to their philosopher of choice, and fill in the gaps of their arguments with venomous insults and condescension towards the perceived outgroup. I can understand why this happens. To identify so personally with somebody, a criticism against them feels like an attack on you. It's not just the suggestion that someone you respect may be wrong, but the implication that you are wrong for having respected them in the first place, or even signed off on that particular argument, and so would look a fool to admit you were wrong after the fact. People react emotionally to this, and it makes sense that they would. Ego is a powerful tool for social leverage. It is the difference between someone who gets walked on or someone who walks on others. The instinct to save face and preserve your clean record, even if only to fool yourself, is too strong for many people to handle. Unfortunately, this knee-jerk compulsion we have to rush to the defense of those who can defend themselves is antithetical to the spread of the very ideas we endorse. The sooner we can address criticism and admit when we're wrong, the sooner productive dialogue can resume. Shouting down dissidents and presenting them as unwashed masses validates the very real concerns that such public figures are objects of a cult of personality. We must admit to ourselves that we can be wrong, and that public personalities are no less vulnerable to making mistakes. Merely parroting the talking points of someone smarter than you, rather than considering their views with even skepticism, is one of the hallmarks of pseudo-intellectual posturing online. I will gladly recommend you read Sam Harris's book The Moral Landscape. I've recommended it before, and I'll surely recommend it many times in the future. However, it comes at no expense to me to also say that I strongly object to many things Sam has said, particularly with regards to the recent election and veganism. I think his arguments have been, quite frankly, awful, and his consistent choice of podcast guests only conveys to me a confirmation bias. You may disagree, but how often do you? How long can you listen to somebody without objecting to something they say? How long can you listen to me without objecting to something I say? We should expect disagreements, whether well-founded or otherwise, and address it with honesty rather than mockery and contempt. If you don't fully understand what someone is saying, or what they're saying comes across to you as plausible but not necessarily true, don't assume accuracy on their part. Don't forfeit healthy skepticism in exchange for a flag with a name on it. You don't owe any of these men your loyalty, let alone your intellectual credibility. Think for yourself, strike out from your inspirations, be receptive to contrary information, and pioneer new roads of thought through the marketplace of ideas. Be your own person, not a surrogate mouthpiece for some armchair philosopher.